Page 96, Hava Nagila. Hava Nagila? Hava or Hava? Hava. I guess it's Hava Nagila. I don't know. I don't speak the language. I hardly speak English. Let's look this over and see what we got going. There's nothing new, but we're sure got a lot going on here. I look it over, I see it's two pages of music to learn. Now, with the repeat signs, it's a lot longer than two pages, but as far as the music goes, it's just two pages to deal with. Trouble in bass clef, no sharps or flats in the key signature. We're either in the key of C major or A minor. If we look at the end here, it's in A minor chord. You have to consider all the notes in both hands. So this has it here, and this has the C. It's an A minor. Do the scales for both those, C major and A minor. We'll probably see a bunch of G sharps in here if it's an A minor, because that's the seventh step in A minor, and we're using a harmonic minor usually. And cut time. Oh, gotta love that cut time. Well, again, when I start to learn a piece that's in cut time, I pretend it's in 4-4 time because that makes the rhythm a lot easier to count. And once I have the rhythm and I know what it is, I'm not counting it anymore, and I go to t put it up to speed, then I'll put it in cut time. So for this lesson, I'm going to talk about this as though it's in 4-4 time for a while. Right hand first, let's see what's happening here. Here. One and two and three. One and two and three. Remember the rule for accidentals. It applies for that point on for the rest of the measure for that staff. So in that third measure, both of those are G sharps. And one. And then thumb. This puts us in position for what's coming. Now, measure 10. This rhythm is all over the place. One, two, three. Triplet, or four and a. One, two, three. One and two and three and a. Four and one, two, three. Measure 19, we get the chords. A chord. It's an A minor chord with the C its first inversion. And that's a bunch of those. And then we get to measure 23, we're up here. So you just go lift up and move. One and two and one. Three, two, one. And what's the point in the three, two, one? I mean, you can do them all in one. The point is, this moves. This is quick. When we put it in cut time, this is really quick. And when you get repeated notes, especially in a quick piece, it helps to stay relaxed if you can use different fingers on the notes. And that's why we're doing a 3 2 1. Because I can do this and stay fairly relaxed. But if I use one finger, any finger, it doesn't matter, it starts to tense up. So the 3 2 1 is a good idea. I, I agree with that. Now when you do this, do it in both hands. Go slow. You should practice all the different combinations, but that's the idea of what we're doing here. Measure 27, it's here. Measure, measure 31, they're going to 3, 2, 2. No. Do 3, 2, 1, like you've been doing. And just cross over second finger. Here. You're sort of in that position with the thumb here. So. Then reach down. Yeah. Let's look at the bottom. Uh, measure 41's okay. And then what? The second ending? There you up here. And then one and two. So it's one, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. One, two, rest up here. Okay. Well, that's the right hand. That was an adventure. Let's see what the left hand's doing. We got broken chords. The left hand, the chords, you think, okay, well, it's an E major chord. Actually, it's a little misleading. You have to consider pretty much the whole line in this case because all of these notes, this, these notes, and in the third major, these notes, put them all. It's your 5-7 chord. 
an e, A minor. Remember, A minor has an E. That, that's what this is. And that's all we're doing here. So it's, a, it's a five seven chord. We're just now using all the notes at the same time. Then an A minor chord for measure five. Okay, now measure ten, you just come down here. One, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, come down. Five one on is fine on these. And up here, just lift up and move. Okay. Just a bunch of broken chords in the left hand. Let's see what's happening with the hands together. Now, when I first put the hands together, I hesitate all over. That's fine. I just want to know how they're working here and here. One, two, three, four. Now I need a thumb here in the right hand. Let's go to measure 10. We're down here. One, two, three. you're wondering why are we using thumb on all these when before we were doing a 3-2 on and the reason is because these aren't fast like those were we can handle this and okay you could do 3-2 on if you wanted to it just isn't necessary because these don't go that fast that's basically the piece you put the hands together then go back over it slowly and carefully and get rid of the hesitations now on a longer piece like this I would highly recommend that you break this up into sections. You see the double bars occasionally in the piece? That's a, the indicating of a section, start a new one. So it's like at the beginning, the first two lines is a section. So forget the rest of the piece. Get the first two lines where you can play them at least slowly with no, no hesitations. Just focus on those. Don't play any other. Once you can do that, then put that aside. Don't play it anymore for a while. Forget it. Don't forget it, but don't play it anymore for a while. And go down and start at measure 10 and do the last three lines of that page all together. I mean, that's a little more than a section, but we'll just take it all as one shot. And work on those three lines and get them without any hesitations. Don't play any of the rest of it. Just focus on that. When you have that, then go over to measure 23 and you do three lines there. And work on those until you no hesitations. And then you can do the last two lines, same thing. And once you can do the last two lines on page 97 with no hesitations, then you go back and put it all together. You will not have forgotten the other stuff. You'll still be able to play it, at least to an extent. And it's a much better way to practice than always starting at the beginning and trying to go through it. I don't recommend it. It's very inefficient. You waste a lot of time playing stuff you can already play. When you're trying to learn a piece, you need to spend your time focusing on parts you can't play yet. Spend most of your time on those. Let the other stuff set it aside. You'll learn it much more quickly that way. You really will. Anyway, that's my spiel on practicing. For now. Once I have that, no hesitation, then the articulation. We have accents of staccatos. Accents is a little louder. Left. Uh, measure 10, staccato, so I'm flexing at the wrist there, bum, bum, accent. Okay. This is measure 16, One. I got a staccato here. Yeah. So you go through and you put in the articulation, and then we add the dynamics. It's for the melody, which is the right hand. Loud with the accent makes a very loud note. Loud. Left hand's in the background. As you ten, you come down a little bit to moderately loud. Here, right hand. Well, the accented note would be a, very, a loud note. And then at the bottom, it's like measures 21, 22. The hairpin to gradually get louder. You're moderately loud at measure 21. Moderately loud, then louder. And then you're loud there at the last with an accent, very loud. And then suddenly, all of a sudden, you drop down to moderately. 
Yeah. So, so start of measure 18, we're here loud, sort of loud, sort of loud. Very loud, and then all of a sudden, so it goes very loud. This left hand, I'm just connecting it. It doesn't say anything. I could disconnect it. it doesn't say anything, so just connect them. It's easier. Measure 27, a little bit louder. Crescendo and measure 29, you're going to go up to loud, but don't get loud till the half note. I measure 31. And then measure 20 or 35. The first time you play this, you're moderately loud in the right hand. And when you repeat it, then you're going to be loud. Wrist claps a little bit, stay relaxed. I use weight, I just use a little more weight when I want to play it loud. And it ends loud, even with a retardando. Yeah, loud. Actually, it's very loud on the last chord because of the accent. Don't stiffen up and pound on it. Let the wrist claps loose, just using a lot of weight, and the notes go down very quickly. That's all. And then the speed. Oh, goody. Well, they give you a metronome marking for the half notes. The cut time, half note gets a count. So this is where we put it in cut time. We're going to feel this. One, two, one, two. See, in four, four time, those would be the natural accents. One, two, three, four. One, two, three. In cut time, there's only one natural accent. That's the beginning. One, two, one, two. That's, we want to feel this in two. Got to be accurate, so don't go getting too energetic here. It's, make it accurate. Find the hardest part. What about this? How fast can you play that? And that's going to be your with energy for now. You'll get better over time. You come back and play it again later, and you'll get it better and play it faster. Now, we have all these repeat signs. Let's make sure we understand them. At the end of the second line, you have first and second endings. The repeat sign of the first ending sends you back to the beginning to do all that again. And then you skip the first ending because you only do an ending once. Do the second ending and go on. Then at, at the end of the fourth line, or measure 17, you, that's a first ending with a repeat sign. That sends you back to the reverse repeat sign at measure 10. So you can do all that again. Then you skip the first ending and go on the second time. Again. Then on page 97, the last two lines, you're going to play those. Uh, well, you're going to play the fourth line twice, and the last line have the endings. So the first time you play the first ending, and the second time you play the second ending. So the piece is quite a bit longer than it looks. It's not twice as long, but almost. Now they've added pedal. We're using pedal here for the effect. We're only using it on the chords there. I'll measure 19 here. And at the bottom of the, the toward the end, we're using it for the chords. We're going to bring out the overtones on the chords and help connect the chords. That's all. Don't use pedal anywhere else. That would ruin it, please. Just just where it tells you to use it. And because it's as quick as it is, you almost have to push the pedal down with the notes. Although you can lag it, I think. So on measure 18, you're here. And then change it and leave it down. when you play uh, 23, lift it up. Because you're getting loud there at the end of the page in a major 23, you're soft. All of a sudden. So again, we're... Just softly. Then at the end, the last line, second ending, put it down with the chord here, because we want a bit of an explosion. So I want the overtones immediately. Lift it up right when I play the next one. Here, and then lift it up as I play the eighth note. And then the last, the chord, put it down with the chord. And then everything comes up together. See, I'm not putting the pedal down after I play the notes at the end because of the effect. I want the overtones immediately. It's more of an explosive sound. So, uh, again, the 
second ending at the bottom, put it down with them, and lift it up as a play it. Yeah. And lift it up, and push it down with them, because we get that explosion. this together very slowly and check the notes and the rhythms. I'm not going to do louds and softs. I will do the pedaling so you can see it better and we will do all the repeats and all that stuff. So I'll give us four counts because I'm going to do this in 4-4 four, four time. We're going to go slow. Now again if you're going to use pedal on something put your foot on the pedal at the beginning and leave it on for the whole piece. Don't be putting a foot on the pedal and taking it off. We don't dance at the piano. It's, uh, if you're going to use it at all, anywhere, leave it on the pedal, your foot on the pedal for the whole piece. One, two, ready, go. Two. Four, two, three, 
three, four, one, two, and three.